24 frames, 30 frames, 1 50th of a second, 1 100th of a second, f2.8, 1 stop over, 2 stops under, minus 6 decibels, what the f*** is an f-stop? This is Video Settings 101. Filming on a proper camera can seem like a right old ball ache compared to hitting record on your phone. There's a whole world of settings and equipment that can take your videos to the next level. And if you're not sure what equipment you need, then check out the first part of this, which I'll link to in the description. But making great looking content for YouTube, your first clients, or just home videos doesn't have to be super complicated or drain your bank account. So this is a little quick start guide to using cameras like this. Look, I started shooting videos when I had to transfer it from tape. So this is all a hell of a lot easier than it used to be. But understanding settings like frame rates, shutter speed, ISO, aperture, and getting a grasp on other essentials such as exposure meters, lighting, and sound will really help the process go smoothly and you to enjoy it more, which is key. So you should have everything you need and then ready to hit record. So it's time to look at those daunting settings. First up, let's talk about resolution. You'll probably have the choice of recording in different resolutions, 1080 and 4K are the standards today. 4K is four times more pixels than 1080, but that doesn't always mean it's better. Some cameras have rubbish 4K. I'm looking at cheap GoPro knockoffs in particular, and some cameras have terrible autofocus in 4K mode. 4K can look better, and it can allow you to zoom in more when editing, but don't let it bother you. 1080 is perfectly fine to film and editing, no matter what people in forums might say. But try and stay away from 720p if you see that, as that's nine times less pixels than 4K and is starting to show its age. Well, it's past, it's past showing its age. But some perspective here. If you've ever watched a Hollywood movie on a DVD, that was probably in 480p, which is even worse. So a little context is important. Frame rate. Frame rate is literally how many frames, and by that we mean still photos effectively, your camera takes every second. You might hear it called frames per second or FPS or P. In the UK, our standard is 25. In the US, it's 30. Films are usually 24, which is why a lot of people online like to bully people into thinking 24 is better. Don't panic! Don't panic! Don't panic if your camera can't do it. It won't make you create better content. You might also see options for 23.98 or 29.97. Don't get too caught up with it. Use round numbers where possible, but the most important thing is to shoot, edit, and export in the same frame rate. Now, in the earlier video, I said the Canon R100 can shoot in 60 frames a second. Something like the Canon R100 is a great entry point as it shoots 4K, can capture slow motion at 60 frames a second, and I'll come on to these points in the next video about settings. And others can shoot even higher, like 100 or 120 frames per second, sometimes 240 frames a second. This means they're able to shoot more still images, which can then be used to slow the footage down. If your final video is going to be in 25 frames a second and you film someone water skiing at 100 frames, then in the edit, you'll be able to slow that down so it's four times slower. 25, 100, four times. Why would you do that? Well, because that can look cool, but it can also be used to smooth out the motion of the camera and create buttery, sexy shots. Basically, if you want a slower shot down, you have to shoot it at a different frame rate first. Otherwise, it'll be jumpy, which is bad. So in your head, shoot at your base frame rate of 25 or 30 for anything that has talking, and then use a higher frame rate for other creative shots like slow motion. Shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time that each video frame is exposed to light, typically shown as a fraction of a second. Shutter speed is directly related to your frame rate. Basically, take whatever frame rate you're filming in, let's say 25, and double it. Always generally double it. So that means your shutter speed would be 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting at 30 frames, it should be at 1 60. If you're shooting in slow motion and 120 frames per second, then your shutter speed needs to be double that at 1 240th of a second. But sometimes you'll find your camera doesn't have an exact double match. In that case, go to the nearest higher one. Never, ever, unless you know exactly why you're making the choice for creative reasons, have your shutter speed as less than double your frame rate because you'll end up with choppy video and that's bad. Aperture. Aperture and f-stop are, for the sake of this video, the same thing. You'll see your lens will have numbers like f2.8 or f3.5 or f16. These show how much light the lens lets into the camera and also how much depth of field there will be. Very generally speaking, lower numbers look more cinematic 
because you can have your subject in focus and the background blurry, which people often think looks cool. But sometimes we want more in focus, so you can creatively adjust as you need to. But generally speaking, keep the number low, otherwise you have to compensate for the reduced amount of light by adjusting your ISO or something else. So ISO is basically a digital boost of light to your camera. It can help make dark shots less dark, or if it's too bright, we can use this to bring things down. But beware, boosting your ISO can make our video look noisy and grainy. That's not great. And there are upper and lower limits for each. So as a general rule of thumb, keep your ISO as low as possible. In a way, I find video easier than photography because you have more settings that should be fixed. To pull all this together, I'm gonna to tell you how I would set up your camera to start with and then adjust from there. If you're in the UK like me and we're gonna film some talking, then set your resolution to 4K or 1080 if that's all you got, your frame rate to 25, your shutter speed to 50, because it's double, your ISO to 100, because that's as low as it goes, and your aperture to as low as that goes as well, whether that's f2.8 or f4, just as low a number as you can. Then see how that looks. If it's too dark, then you can boost your ISO. If it's too bright, then we can change the aperture to a bigger number to reduce the light into the lens. We'll lose some depth of field, but everything from this point is a bit of a trade-off. We could also, if desperate, raise our shutter speed. Remember to never lower it so it's below that double number. Really, we ought to be adding a filter in front of the lens to reduce the light into it, but that's an additional expense you may not be ready for yet and is outside the scope of this video. How do we know if our video is too bright or dark? Well, part of it's definitely using your eyes, but your camera will have a handy little exposure meter. Generally speaking, you wanna have the marker in the middle of the meter. To the right and it's too bright, and to the left, it's too dark. But it depends what scene you're filming. You'll probably see numbers like minus one or plus 0.3 that show you just how far over or underexposed it is. It's all about balancing the three key parts of the exposure triangle, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. As you adjust any of those there, you'll see the numbers change and we're looking for 0.0, .0 on that exposure meter. The more you do this, the easier it will get. Audio levels. A quick bit about audio levels. When recording talking, you want to keep an eye on the volume of the dialogue going into your camera to make sure it's going to sound good. We measure sound in decibels and zero decibels is the maximum level for digital audio before it explodes and sounds terrible and distorted. So when recording your audio, you don't want to be anywhere near that. On your camera, there will be a page or a setting where you can adjust the sound level. We want to record our audio at around minus 12 decibels. That buys us some room for safety and is loud enough to not have to worry about hiss and other noise being a problem when we boost it later in the edit to around minus six decibels. Beyond cameras, equipment and settings, there is one more thing you need to know about, and it's the most powerful tool when it comes to creating a good video. And that is storytelling. A great movie director can create a brilliant film with a terrible camera. A poor storyteller can use the best camera in the world, but can only make a poor movie. So remember, that the settings will only get you so far. That's as much as I'm gonna go into for this video. If there's anything I didn't explain that you're wondering about, like white balance, yeah, I forgot to talk about white balance. Whoops, a lot of people will leave this on auto, but don't, please, because if the light changes, your colors will change too, and it will look weird. All white balance does, basically, is help your camera to get the right colors. It can look too blue or too yellow if you get it wrong or skin tones can look unnatural. So you can set this manually to something like 5,500 Kelvin, which is the temperature for daylight, but you don't have to know the various numbers for different light settings. Even if you choose a preset like cloudy, daylight, or whatever your camera has, and that looks about right, then it's better to choose that than auto as it won't be constantly changing. So that's white balance done quickly, apologies back to the video. If there's anything I didn't explain that you're wondering about, let me know in the comments and I'll dive in and explain where I can. And there might be things I can make a whole video about. So I really appreciate you letting me know. Remember, start with what you have now and make it as good as you can. Consistency combined with gradual learning is what's gonna make you better. You can't be the best right at the beginning. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and think about subscribing. Oh, and do one more thing for me. Be a good human for sake.
24 frames, 30 frames, f2.8, 150th of a second, one 100th of a second, one stop over, two stops under, minus six decibels. What the f***? 